بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Now Allah has given all of us a limited amount of time on earth. How do we use it? How do we spend that time? In a hadith related by Imam Tirmidhi rahmatullahi alayhi in his sunan from Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiyallahu an Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says on the day of reckoning a servant's feet will not shift from his place until he is questioned about five things. An umrihi fima afna wa an shababihi fima abla. He will be questioned about his age, his life. Where did he spend it? His youth, where did he while away his youth? His wealth. Where did he acquire it? Four, how did he dispense of it? And number five, his knowledge. What did he do with his knowledge and understanding? But the first two things concern us, which is a servant's feet will remain firmly planted and won't shift from his place on the day of judgment until he is questioned and until he satisfactorily answers these questions about five things. And the first one is his life, his age. What did he do with his age? And number two, his youth. Now, interestingly, <coughs> why be questioned? Surely, if he's questioned about his life and his age, that includes his youth. So why be questioned specifically about youth again? That's because of its importance. Allah Azza wa Jal gives a person, man or woman, in their youth, the height of their strength and the best of their faculties. <coughs> they are at their peak. Allah has given them life, strength, intelligence, understanding, ability, limbs, organs, a body. What do they do with that body? Are they grateful to Allah or are they ungrateful to him? And one expression of gratitude is to use the gift that you have been given in the manner that the one who gives you the gift desires and wishes. Gratitude is not just verbal. Gratitude is also practical. If you give someone a gift and your hope is that this valuable expensive gift which I give this person, they will use it, remember me, thereby, and they will use it for the purpose that I have given it to them. If you give someone a gift and to your face they say thank you, they express the verbal gratitude and appreciation, they acknowledge the gift, but then they go away. You then later come to learn that after the verbal expression of gratitude and thanks, the gift was wasted. It was left aside never used again, never referred to again. It was never used for the purpose that you gave the gift. In fact, worse, it was actually abused. How would you, as a donor of that gift, feel, despite the initial verbal expression of thanks and gratitude? Would you be pleased? Would you be enlightened? Or would you be insulted, hurt and offended? Would you feel that I tried to win the favour of this person and I tried to please them. I tried to bring joy to their hearts and happiness to myself by giving them this gift and they wasted it and abused it. That love will turn to hate. That joy will turn to sorrow. That happiness will turn to great disappointment and an insult and an offence. Because despite the verbal expression of gratitude, there was no practical gratitude. In fact, the opposite. There was abuse of that gift. Now, let's place ourselves in the position of the recipient of Allah's blessings and gifts. Allah has given us eyes, ears, the senses, the heart, limbs of the body, the mind. And Allah has told us how to use these gifts in the obedience of Allah. Not just be verbally grateful for them, but also be practically grateful. One of the first verses which I recited in the beginning was, وَلَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Speaking about night and day, that we have made night and day two signs. And the verse ends with, 
and so that you may be grateful. Allah has given us night and day, Allah has given us time, so that we may put time to good use and be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What will our relationship be with Allah if we, far from expressing verbal gratitude and practical gratitude and using time as a gift and as a precious gift, if we actually abuse it, what will be our relationship with Allah?